Good morning and Happy New Year to everybody at the start of this new calendar year. Uh, welcome to this week's weekly market update with me, Michael Hewson, Friday the 12th of January, as we look back at the um, price action of the last few days and the week ahead of the 15th of January 2024. Um, since the end of last year uh, and the strong gains leading up to the end of last month, markets have struggled, essentially. I think we haven't seen any of the same enthusiasm to carry the momentum higher um, that we saw in November and December. Trading activity has been relatively subdued and ultimately we've seen a, fellow, a fairly negative bias so far year, year to date. And, you know, you sort of have to ask yourself why that would be and why we've started to see a little bit of caution come into the market. Um, risk sentiment has been slightly tempered. We can certainly see that in the way all of the major markets have behaved since the opening days of January. FTSE 100 has slipped back. Um, one of the reasons for the FTSE 100 sliding back has, has been the weakness that we've seen in oil and gas prices, which actually is a good thing, um, takes some of the pressure off consumers. Um, we've also seen some fairly decent retail updates from the likes of Marks and Spencers, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, and next. Um, JD Sports issued a profits warning, um, as has Burberry. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag, and obviously the misses um, or the disappointment over some of the, the, the numbers so far year to date has, has seen fairly sizable moves towards the downside. And even some of the decent numbers have prompted uh, a response of the meh variety. People aren't particularly overly impressed. And as I say, it's hard to assign a singular reason for the lack of enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. And obviously there's uncertainty around the prospects for the global economy. But I think it's more to do with the fact of the timeline for central bank rate cuts. Um, in, in December, obviously we saw Fed Chair Jay Powell um, perform a rather extra, extraordinary pivot when it came when it comes to the prospect of um, when we can expect to see a loosening of monetary policy from the Federal Reserve, he actually opened to the door to the prospect of rate cuts. And it was a sharp reversal from the tone that we saw at the beginning of December. Nonetheless, equity markets liked it and bond markets liked it as well because we saw um, yields fall back quite sharply. Now, we have seen a bit of a rebound in the US 10 year um, since the end of last year. I think largely on the back of the fact that um, some of the, the data out of the US has been reasonably positive, certainly on the labor side of things. The payrolls report um, was fairly positive, a much better number than expected for December. Um, the unemployment rate continues to remain at fairly low levels of 3.5. 7%, although I'm struggling a little bit with the fact that the participation rate fell modestly from 62.8% to 62.5%, so that was a bit of a head scratcher. But weekly jobless claims are around about 200,000. Um, and the CPI report this week was slightly, slightly firmer than expected. So the idea that we could see rate cuts from the Federal Reserve by March um, took a little bit of a knock. And, and to be quite honest, it's, it, the idea that the Fed's going to start cutting rates in March, it's, it's not an argument that I can really get behind. Um, the US economy saw 4.9% GDP growth in Q3. In Q4, we're still likely to see a fairly decent quarter. Um, the unemployment rate, job, the, the, the labor market still looks fairly resilient. We're certainly not seeing any significant signs of stress as far as the US economy is concerned, even as we look ahead to uh, the first quarter of this year, 
and we could well see earnings guidance because we're heading into earnings season now, Q4 earnings season. We've got US banks starting today with JP Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo and Bank of America. It'll be interesting to see the market reaction to um, th those numbers today. Um, I think it could be instructive when it comes to the overall um, direction of travel when it comes to US equity markets. Um, what we saw yesterday with respect to the inflation numbers, and we've got PPI numbers, US PPI numbers later today. So it'll be interesting to see whether we, we see a pickup in inflation on the PPI measure, which has, you know, which, which has been consistently coming down for most of the last 12 months on a core basis. It'll be interesting to see whether that continues to come lower or whether we start to see a little bit of a rebound there. US two-year yields are back at the lows of last month. Be interested to see whether or not um, that trend of weaker yields continues in the wake of the PPI numbers. But the idea that we're going to see a March rate cut, I think, took a knock this week. And ultimately, I don't expect the Fed to start cutting rates until well into the second quarter of this year. So we're not talking, you know, we're, we're talking June potentially. Um, May, I still struggle with the idea that we could get a rate cut. In May, um, you know, if you don't hear the ECB talking about rate cuts and the and the euro the euro area economy is on its knees, and yet we've got people talking about the Fed cutting rates, and not the ECB. If anyone needs to cut rates, it's the ECB, not the Federal Reserve. Um, but this is the, um, you know, this is the, it's, this is the world that we're operating in at the moment. Um, you know, can the Fed afford to cut rates? I would argue that they need to see more data. I think we need to see more evidence with inflation at 3.4%. That inflation is returning to target. Yes, commodity prices are lower, but that doesn't mean, given the geopolitics that are, that are, that are at bay at the moment, that are at play at the moment, that that will continue. Obviously, we've seen oil prices react to this morning's retaliation on the part of the UK and US militaries to Houthi attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that escalates over the course of the next few days. Certainly the response as far as oil prices is concerned, the seen oil prices rebound to um, one week highs, back to the levels that were at the end of last year. But overall, oil prices have been weaker um, over the course of the last few, few days we've seen a rebound um, we, we, we've seen a sell-off back towards the December lows um, you know for me I think oil prices are likely to remain reasonably well supported um, with, with these key support levels all the way through here uh, at around about $71 a barrel for Brent why because ultimately I think any dips are going to be bought into the US still needs to refill the strategic petroleum reserve. So that should support the downside when it comes to WTI and therefore ergo should also support the downside when it comes to Brent crude as well. So certainly I think there's limited downside even as we are seeing lower highs. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not the current squeeze that we're seeing higher is able to take out the peaks that we saw around about Boxing Day towards the end of last year so that'll be something i'll be being i'll be paying particularly close attention to over the course of the next few days FTSE 100 finding a little bit of support at the 200 day moving average but we've also got to remember that we've got a nice little trend line coming in here from the lows back in october as well as the 50 day moving average as well so a little bit of weakness but ultimately i th think it's within the broader confines of the wider uptrend. Similarly, with the DAX, um, here we've got a little bit of support in and around 16,400, there or thereabouts. Very notable that it also coincides with a series of peaks through here. So, uh, you know, and we've got the 50 and 200 day moving averages also pointing higher as well. So it'll be interesting to see how the DAX reacts if we're able to break above, oops, drew that completely wrong. Let's try that again. 
There we go. So let's draw that through there. Nice little piece. So we've got a little bit of a, a channel forming, a short-term trading channel forming on the DAX. Be interested to see whether or not we're able to take out um, this peak the start of here around about 16,900 or the 17,000 level on the DAX. Looking at the S&P 500, 4,800 or the previous peaks, or this 4,800 level is proving to be a bit of a barrier. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not we're able to take that previous peak, the, the, peak, the peaks from January last year. So, sorry, January two years ago, even, um, January 2022, whether we're able to take those peaks out from two years ago. NASDAQ 100, pushing higher, seen a bit of a reversal, saw a bit of a reversal last week, but we've seen a strong rebound this week. So we're now back to flat. Um, flat on the year more or less when it comes to uh the sorry flat on the year um well yeah i mean basically with the end of last year we finished a little bit a little bit a little bit on the on on the on the back foot but ultimately um we've rebounded haven't taken out the previous highs yet so we'll be interested to see whether or not there's a, any more traction on that certainly lower yields help in that regard we've seen 34 year highs on the part of the Nikkei 225, that continues to push higher above 35,000. Could we go through to 36? While dollar yen uh, continues to head back towards 146 and 150, then the likelihood is that um, we'll see dollar yen continue to push higher. I don't know why I closed my watch list there. Let's quickly go. There we go. So, so looking, looking, looking at the week ahead, um, momentum. It's a little bit sideways at the moment, an awful lot of indecision. I think the key themes for 2024 are going to be not so much when we get rate, not, not so much as to whether we get rate cuts. I think we will get rate cuts. It's really about the timing. Um, the initial timing was priced for March, April, May. Given the data that we've seen thus far in terms of inflation, I think that's unlikely. In the UK, we've got CPI coming out on the 17th of January for December. We've also got wages data as well for the three months to November. Uh, and both of those, I think, both of those sets of numbers will be very key in the context of when to expect rate cuts from the Bank of England. Um, and I think that will play for me into a slightly um, stronger sterling theme, because I think at the moment, the market is fixated on the idea that the, U the UK economy will need the Bank of England to start cutting rates sooner than everybody else. I think that's unlikely, and there are a number of reasons around that assumption, or not assumption, presumption, on my part. First and foremost, the GDP numbers that we saw for November this morning were slightly better than expected. We can see that in these numbers here. UK GDP for November came out 0.3%, um, reversing the 0.3% contraction in October. Um, index of services provided a 0.4% of that rebound. And certainly, I think if you look at the PMIs, um, the services PMIs that we've seen at the end of last year, they've actually been fairly strong. Retail sales in November was 1.1%. Now, obviously, we've got retail sales for December coming out next week as well, so they will be instructive. We've seen some reasonably positive trading updates from the likes of Next, Marks and Spencers, Tesco's and Sainsbury's, and potentially a bunch of other retailers. Yeah, there have been some weak spots, Burberry, Luxury, obviously, but Burberry, most of that decline was in the US market. We saw a 15% decline in, in same store sales. So most of the decline um, in Burberry's business was overseas. Um, so I think the data for the UK would appear to suggest that after a week start to Q4, we saw a fairly decent rebound in November and December, which should mean, which should mean, that the UK economy perhaps avoids a recession, a technical recession. 
Having said that, there were a number of downward revisions to previous month's GDP numbers, which might mean that perhaps um, Q3 saw a deeper contraction um, from the minus 0.1% that we saw in the previous quarterly numbers and that too. But ultimately, I think Q4 should be better than expected and should signal a much better um, uh, economic performance in Q4. And that is likely to stay the Bank of England's hand. And let's not forget that three people voted for a rate hike in December. So it's a tall order for me to then expect them to start voting for rate cuts. You know, I think at the next meeting in February, we're likely to see those three hikers, if you like, start to perhaps temper their expectations and signal a pause. And obviously the wages data that is coming out over the course of the next few days is going to come in, is still above 7%. You know, we're talking UK wages that are rising at over 7%. Um, and that is going to give the Bank of England, I think, significant pause for thought when it comes to thinking about rate cuts. We are expecting a modest decline um, to 6.7% from 7.2%. That 7.3%, that excludes bonuses, but ultimately that's still over three times higher than the Bank of England's inflation target. Headline CPI for December is expected to fall modestly from 3.9% to 3.8%, but let's not forget services CPI is trending at 6.3% year on year. So I will also be paying particular attention to that and core CPI was 5.1% in November. So rate cuts from the Bank of England in Q1, not a chance. Um, we might see them towards the end of Q2, depending on how quickly we see inflation slow from the current levels. A number of investment banks have suggested that it could fall to 2% by April. Well, if it does, we're not gonna know that until May. So, because the April numbers come out in May. So we still got at least another four months for inflationary pressures to show evidence of a continued downward path. Now, you can argue that obviously China is already in deflation and that deflationary impulse will um, ripple out through the rest of the global economy. And that could well be true, but given the fact that China is already in deflation and is the only economy that is, there obviously is a significant lag effect taking effect here. Um, and ultimately, that is going to make, even, even accounting for that, it's going to be, it's going to make central bankers extremely cautious, having been slow to tighten on the way in, they could well be similarly cautious on the way out. So um, that for me suggests that we could well see a break through 128 um, and up to 130 as it becomes increasingly apparent that the Bank of England isn't, any, isn't in any hurry to reduce rates significantly. Now that's not to say that they're not gonna cut rates by 25 basis points, you know, basically just tweak them slightly, but I would be very surprised if we see the sort of rate cuts that are currently being priced by the markets over the course of the next three to six months, but who knows. But based on this current direction of travel, I would hope to see cable continue to push higher towards 130 over the course of the next two to three months. Similarly, Euro dollar, I think is has a decent prospect of pushing higher. Again, here, um, it's, in, it's very much in a range, but once again, we are in an uptrend. Um, the lows are getting higher. And I think as long as we stay above the lows that we saw last Friday, around about 108.75, 108.50, and these two moving averages here, then we could well see a revisit of 110 and move through 110 and a gradual move higher towards 112 over the course of the next few sessions. 
I think the dollar will continue to get a little bit weaker, not because the Fed is going to be delaying um, the prospect of rate cuts, but because I think that um, ultimately that they will come. It's just that the market's direction of travel um, is probably a little too ex expectations, market expectations of the direction of travel are, shall we say, um, a little bit optimistic when it comes to the timing of such rate cuts. If anything, the ECB is probably going to be forced to cut significantly sooner, and that could mean that euro sterling um, could see further weakness over the course of the next few sessions. Certainly, I'm not expecting great things from euro sterling. We are very much in a range here, with the top of the range around about the November highs of 87. 87.70, fairly decent support around about 80 or 90. So continue to play that range. Um, it's pretty uninteresting. Dollar yen, uh, bit of a bit of a top at 146 at the moment, and the 50-day moving average. This cloud resistance should as should act as a decent cap. Um, would expect dollar yen to start um, or sh should start to potentially roll over um, as long as we stay below this area of resistance through here. We did try and move through 146 earlier this week. We weren't able to sustain it. And as long as as long as this Ichimoku cloud, which generally tends to be reasonably reliable when it comes to dollar yen, while this area of resistant caps, then I think we could start to trade 140, 146 over the course of the next few sessions. In terms of the earnings numbers, it's a fairly lightweight week. Next week, we've got Deliveroo reporting um, their latest fourth quarter numbers for 2023. Certainly, we've seen a fairly decent performance from the Deliveroo share price over the course of the past 12 months. Um, the bigger question is whether or not it can continue the momentum um, that we've seen over the course of the past year or so. Come off the highs back in November heading back to support in and around the 200 day moving average. We could draw in a fairly decent trend line here, but certainly I think the various deals that Deliveroo has signed with various retailers are helping the business um, to um, continue to push higher and ultimately start to show signs of profitability. Back in October, um, Bank of America targeted 151 share price target. We pretty much got there already. The big question is whether we can sustain the momentum that we've seen over the course of the past 12 months. Uh, and that'll be, I think that will be a key test for when, when, when the numbers get released next week. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, Q4 bank earnings next week. Um, big, big resistance on Goldman Sachs share price over the course of the past 12 months. Um, I'm not expecting great things from bank earnings, if I'm honest. Um, earlier this week, Citigroup um, reported that they were taking billions of dollars in write downs on their Argentina and Russia business. Obviously, the currency um, depreciation has hurt the business there. But also, they warned about uh, volatility, a lack of volatility in investment banking um, could see a hit to their Q4 numbers as did Barclays. Barclays also warned of a significant impact on Q4 numbers. So it'd be very interesting to see whether or not this week's earnings season um, starts to see a little bit of a reversal of, the, of the, the rally that we've seen off the lows back in October. Goldman Sachs has got big, big resistance at 390. That for me is a key barrier to further gains going forward. Um, so I think to summarise, um, we've got UK wages and UK CPI for December on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. We've got retail sales from the UK on the 19th on Friday. As I say, we saw a big rebound in consumer spending um, in November. Um, we could well see a little bit of a flat month for December. Um, big gains in food and drink. But one of the things that was notable in the recent retail numbers was that while we saw fairly so, fairly strong growth in grocery sales, um, general merchandise like clothing, 
and home and what have you and big ticket items saw a significant slowdown. So you could see a little bit of a mixed picture when it comes to December retail sales. We've got US retail sales for December on the 17th. The US consumer has proven to be reasonably resilient when it comes to consumer spending. Um, expect that to be um, continue to be the case in December, expecting a rise of 0.4% for US retail sales. Um, for December up from 0.3 in November. And we've also got fourth quarter China GDP um, and December retail sales on the 17th as well. Now, expecting a slightly slower rate of growth from the 1.3% that we saw in Q3. Um, I'm always skeptical about China GDP numbers because ultimately I think they make them up as they go along. If you look at the industrial production numbers, if you look at the retail sales numbers, um, they've actually been stronger in Q4 for China than they were in Q3, and yet the estimates for China Q4 GDP are actually lower than they were in Q3, expecting around about 0.9% rise in fourth quarter GDP in China. The Chinese economy is struggling with the problems posed by Evergrande, Country Garden, and now latterly Zhongji. So I think after a slow start to Q4, um, there was a modest improvement in retail sales. In November, we saw a decent uptick in retail sales to 10.1%. This was still below expectations, despite the number including Chinese singles day sales and weak comparatives, given that a lot of China still hadn't come out of lockdown measures in November 2022. So for December 2022 retail sales, we're likely to see a sizable skew because in December 2022, the Chinese economy reopened um, from its COVID lockdown slumber. So we need to be aware of the comparatives for China retail sales when they are released. Um, so, um, as I say, they are due out on the 17th of um, January. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for um, this week's opening um, opening video for 2024. As I say, for me, the, the key takeaways this week are how will the data that we see over the course of the next few weeks impact the timing or the timeline of um, central bank rate cuts? For me, I think they're going to come later rather than sooner. And if they do come later, that could exert downward pressure on equity markets going forward and make it much more difficult to return to the highs that we saw earlier um, at, the end, at the end of last year. That said, we still are in the overall uptrend that we've been in since the October lows. So, you know, bear that in mind as we look ahead to the next few weeks. That's it. Thank you very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.